So as usual, uh, the Israeli-Palestinian issue is a mess and there's more violence. So the latest twist on this is Mohammed Abdul Khadir, uh, who is a 17-year-old uh, Palestinian who was kidnapped uh, out of his uh, neighborhood in East Jerusalem. Fortunately, they just found his body. Uh, he had been burned, badly burned, and thrown in a forest outside of Jerusalem. Okay, uh, now that seems to be in retaliation for three uh, Israeli teenagers who were killed and discovered on Monday. Uh, they are Eyal Yifra, uh, Gilad Shahar, uh, and uh, Naftali Frankel. Okay, they were 19, 16, and 16. Both sides, of course, are livid over all this situation. The Israeli uh, settlers and overall citizens are. Uh, calling for blood in a lot of instances and blaming all the Palestinians and Hamas, including Israeli leadership. The Palestinians now are blaming all Israelis for what happened to the 17-year-old who was kidnapped and burned to death. So here we are again in this mess. Now, I want to actually first start with a positive note. The uncle of one of the kids who was killed, Naftali Frankel, is Yeshaya Frankel. And he said about the Palestinian kid who was killed. Not his nephew, but the Palestinian kid who was killed. There is no difference between blood and blood. A murderer is a murderer, no matter his nationality and age. There is no justification, no forgiveness, and no atonement for any murder. So that's actually a very positive statement. He's saying, what are you doing killing Palestinian kids? Okay, Murder is murder, and there's no excuse for it. So bless his heart for that. Now, uh, Netanyahu also called the uh, uh, murder of the Palestinian kid, reprehensible, atrocious, etc. Okay, now uh, some of the students, Israeli students, who, who were uh, protesting, apparently did not see it the same way. They chanted, "The people demand collective punishment." Okay. <laughs> now think about that. I mean, think about it, how inhumane and unbelievable that is. So let's say you live in a, make it up, a neighborhood in Texas. And there's a guy, you know what, let's go with the Cleveland example. Remember that terrible guy who kidnapped those three girls and held them in the basement for all that time? If they came into your neighborhood and said, because you're in the same neighborhood as that guy, I'm gonna kill your nephew. You would say, what, what are you, that's crazy, I, I, I hate that guy more than you do, he might have kidnapped my daughters, right? No, nope. the people demand collective punishment. Uh, here's another chant by the students. All supporters of murderers are terrorists. Okay, now that's ironic because you're calling for collective punishment. Does that make you a terrorist? Hmm. Then you go to Israeli right-wing activists that's, that are even more extreme. They're chanting a simpler chant, death to Arabs. Hmm. If it's death to Arabs, that would make them murderers. Does that mean they're terrorists? Interesting question. Now, when you turn to Netanyahu, on the issue of the three Israeli teenagers killed, he's not interested in nuance. Now, Hamas claims they did not do those killings. They run the Gaza Strip. Now they have a new unity government with uh, Fatah in the West Bank. Uh, but Hamas is not shy about taking credit for acts. They've been firing a lot of rockets into Israel recently because of all this uh, controversy back and forth. And they take credit for it. In this case, they didn't. Now, the Israeli government claims they have evidence. They think that there's these two guys who are on the run and that they are connected to Hamas and that they did it. Whether that's true or not true, no one knows yet. But Netanyahu, who is of course the Prime Minister of Israel, has declared Hamas is responsible, Hamas will pay, and Hamas will continue to pay. Okay. So round and round we go, and there's no end to this. Okay. Now, who's right, who's wrong on any particular issue, you will get into a debate that will go on for hours and hours. Look, killing civilians is wrong under all of these circumstances. But let's also remember that state violence is wrong. And state violence is when, for example, you occupy someone else's land. And you say, I'm not going to recognize your right to exist. In fact, I'm not going to let you exist. I'm not going to let your state exist. And so I always find it ironic when Israelis say, oh, Palestinians don't right, recognize our right to exist. First of all, that's not even true. The Palestinian government does uh, recognize Israel's right to exist. And then they turn around and say, because of that falsehood, I'm not going to allow you to exist. I believe that's ironic. So look, you want to ask me what my opinion on this is? End the occupation. Okay. Now, if you're in America now, a lot of Christian fundamentalists love the occupation. They think those are biblical lands. Jesus is going to come back and kill everybody. It's going to be Armageddon and it's going to be terrific, right? So they're the real uh, problems here, and they drive our agenda, unfortunately, here in America. But 
how could you be as a rational human being in favor of that? And how would you feel if the shoe was on the other foot? So a lot of those fundamentalists live in the South, they live in places like Texas. Now, if Texas was under occupation, do you think the good folks in Texas might fight back? Or would they just say, oh, okay, that's fine, whoever it is, Belgium, China, Russia, uh, Egypt, to pick a random uh, Middle Eastern country. Yeah, yeah, no, Egypt has Texas now, we will bow our heads. Or do you think every single person in Texas would grab a gun? I'm asking you, okay? What do you think they would do in Texas? So the fundamental problem is the occupation. This cycle of violence where both sides are wrong will go on indefinitely because of the underlying problem, the occupation. It's been 47 years. There's a ton of excuses. Well, no, we had to occupy another year because we couldn't get this, and, and then I wanted this demand, but they didn't give me that demand, and I wanted to do more settlements, and I wanted to do this, and I wanted to do that. And the occupation. It is incumbent on the powerful to be merciful on the powerless. The Palestinians are not the powerful here, okay? Yes, they do their share of attacks, and it's abhorrent, and we say it on the program all the time. But state violence is also abhorrent. An occupation that lasts 47 years is also abhorrent.